Hi everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Virtual here. Welcome to my channel. Today, an art journal tutorial, and we are going bold and bright. I'm working in my 7x10 Canson Mixed Media Art Journal, and I've taken it off the coils. I just created a video showing how to take them off and how to put them back together, so you might want to check that out in case you want to do the same. So I decided that I am going to start this page, break this page, by stamping with some of my letter stamps. I'm spreading some black acrylic paint on my glass and I'm just going to randomly pick some letters and put them on my block here. I figure I don't use these enough, so let's see if we can find ways to use some of our stamps. And it occurs to me that I could put a collection of other small stamps from my various sections, various collections, and use that in the background or later on and just start using things that are just taking up room in my stash. I'm applying the black acrylic paint with the brayer, and I love that. I like how these letters show up, but spoiler alert, not a whole lot of this shows up at the end, and that's okay. The goal here for using them was to try them and see if I could be using them more. and to break the page. So this is a homemade stamp that I made from a sink liner or part of a sink liner. And I'm just stamping with black acrylic paint. Again, I just wanna break this page and I'm putting some black there and I know I'm going to put colors. Now, the only thing I knew about this page was that I was going to go alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow, and turquoise. So basically the primary colors, yellow, red, and blue. And I'm just going to mix them up, kind of block and blend them on here. And then I think, you know, I'm going to use some gesso because I want to see if I can preserve some white space. So this is the lizard and crimson where I'm overlapping them. I know I'm going to get yellow and red are going to make some orange if they're wet. And I'm good with that. I just want bright, bright colors. I love how this turquoise just really, really pops with these other colors. Now my page was not gessoed, which is why the paint isn't blending as much as it would otherwise. If I had just with that page, these colors would have stayed wet instead of soaking into the paper, and I would have had more blending. Now, of course, I forgot all about white space, so I'm coming in with gesso, and I'm just pushing back some of the colors and covering it white. The gesso isn't quite as opaque as I want, so I switch it up to just white acrylic paint and cover that up. And I think that's what's coming up next. But I love how those letter and number stamps in the background look, just random. So I definitely will be using that again. And here I'm coming in with the white acrylic paint and just making, giving myself some white space. I want to build that contrast in. At this point, and for quite a while, I don't have any plan for what I'm going to put on here as a focal image or anything. So there's the other stamp that I created with that same sink liner, and I'm stamping into the white acrylic paint and stamping up. This is giving some great texture because it's very globby paint, and I want to add that texture. Because it's globby, you're going to have to make sure you give it time. There's the, the sink liner, and I used it to make two different kind of stamps. Now I'm coming in with some stencils. This one's called Garden Gate. Now here's the benefit. Where I put the white space, now these stencils are going to really show up because it's blue on white.
I love this garden gate stencil. All these stencils are from the Crafters Workshop and you can get them at the TCW store, the affiliate links in the description box, or at ninniesnapkins.com. She also carries many of the products that I use in all my page creations. There's affiliate links in the description box as well as coupon discount codes. This one is microbial and I'm coming in with the alizarin crimson here and then I'm coming with black. I decide I want a little more contrast. Remember, I want bright and bold. So you can see how most of those numbers and letters have been pushed back. But if I'd wanted to bring them back, I could stamp with them again, but I had already put them out. This is a swirl stencil that I absolutely love. It's called Capricious. And this just makes this background in my mind. It's all very swirly. and I'm using a makeup sponge and black acrylic paint. And I was having so much fun. I, you know, I think I used every stencil a little more than I would have otherwise. I wasn't editing myself, but I was just having fun. A swirl stencil, a swirl stamp, they are basics. I'm just going to edge the page. I've got black paint on my makeup sponge, so I'm just going to use it up and edge my page in the black. I just love, love, love this background. Those colors, those primary colors with the black and the white just really, really sings. Then I'm thinking, what am I going to put as a focal image? And I'm going to admit here, although this isn't on camera, this took me a while to figure out. I tried one thing, I tried another, I looked at all my napkins for the colors that are on here, but in the end, I decided to grab this Felicia Daisy stencil. It's a new one, winter 2021. It's a Valentina Harper design, again, with the Crafters Workshop. And she has a whole section of florals that are very similar to this. And I could have used any one of them or the butterfly one the same way. So here I have a piece of copy paper and I am using yellow paint to stencil with. Then I'm going to put the stencil back in place and put some black in the middle. And then I do put it back on and I use some of the alizarin crimson to change the tone. This was all too much one tone. Now I'm cutting it out and I'm leaving a little bit of a trim. Do you see how I've gone over the edge of this daisy? So I'm leaving some of that in there. But I want to turn this into the focal image. So once it's all cut, this is where I put the stencil back on and I'm adding the alizarin crimson to just make this flower, this daisy, a lot more interesting. I didn't want it just one tone. Then I go along and I'm adding some color to the tips of it. And I'm not worried too much if that stencil is moving. It's, I want it to look like a doodle flower. I want it to look very organic. And I just love it. It's picking up the yellows and the oranges that are in the background. So now that I have the focal image figured out, I'm opening up my binder with my sentiment packs and I keep a copy of them in here and then I can flip through and find just the right quote. So I've picked out a few of them, but I don't think they're big enough. So I'm going to put them on my printer and 
make them bigger. So here I'm just going to take out this master's copy and I blow it up. Now my plan was to use this one, be like a flower and turn your face to the sun. Because I thought, oh, the sense, the, you know, it's bright and yellow and, and that would go. And then I'm cutting it down and I'm thinking, okay, maybe this is a little too big. I wanted it bold because there's so much going on in the background. I wanted bigger letters and bolder, so very, very dark black. And you know what? It would have worked, but I wasn't sold. This one had photo blown up at the same time to the same size. So I thought, you know, I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to audition it. And I keep switching even the orientation because I'm not exactly sure which way I'm going to go. And, and sometimes I don't know till this point. I may think I'm going one way. And then at the very last minute, I decide to go a different way. And then I move that here. And sometimes I take a picture with my camera. And it was at this point, I think, that I decided, yes, I'm going with this saying. And this daisy. Everything's, it's all fit together. So you don't need to know everything right at the beginning. If you don't know what focal image to use, let it sit for a while. That's one of the things I did. I, you know, looked at my napkins and looked at some other focal images and then I just went and I did something else. And when I came back, then I had a different idea. I thought maybe I'll use that daisy. And there's nothing wrong with having your background sitting there being backgrounds for a while. Loving the look. So now I'm grabbing my Liquitex Basics matte medium, fluid matte medium, and I'm going to glue them down. I'm going to adhere them down. You could use gel medium here. These papers are fairly light, so there was no need to, to grab the gel medium, and this was what was handy. And I can't believe I did it again. Happiness is crooked. I love that you can still see a lot of the background here, even though the focal image did cover up a lot of it. Just a word of caution, make sure you're, between layers before you glue, make sure you glue everything or dry everything and make sure it's really dry. You don't want your paints to smear. Even acrylic paints, which are permanent when dry, have to be dry. Then I decide, you know, I wanted to add a little bit more pink to my background. So I'm just dabbing it with my makeup sponge. and giving it a dry. Cutting off the excess, it's always a good idea to make focal points and things stamping go off the edge. Checking to make sure everything was glued down correctly. Now I wanted to make this look like doodle flowers little more. So I grabbed my fine line applicator bottle that has black acrylic paint that has been thinned and very loosely without too much worry I am going to add black detailing on this and I love the look. I'm trying not to worry. Sometimes it globs a little bit. Sometimes it's not exactly perfect. That doesn't matter. It's supposed to be kind of sketchy, kind of doodly rustic. I 
think this adds a lot of interest to it. It makes it stand out a little bit more. Just adding a few more lines. If you don't have the applicator bottles, you can get them at ninniesnapkins.com. She just got them in. It's a complete must have in my art journaling world. But you can use pans if you don't have the bottle. I love how these colors came all together. It's so bright and lovely. Before I put the applicator away, I'm using it to outline the sentiment or parts of the sentiment. It's all that finishing, those little things that you do that just make it all come together. Every little bit of that helps. I'm just finishing off edging using the floating acrylic technique with black acrylic paint and my angle brush. I want to frame the picture. And while I use the black on the makeup sponge around the edges, I like the soft, how it kind of bleeds in and it looks kind of smudge. I think I smeared something here because I didn't wait for it to dry. Then I decide, you know, I need to splatter with some gold paint. And when I finished splattering, I put this off to the side and I was letting it dry, thinking I was done. I was happy with the end result. I was just waiting for all those splatters to dry. They take a little bit. And then I found this little crazy bird on my table and I thought oh he's the right size for the center of the flower and I thought you know what that's perfect because the saying goes happiness blooms from within so I'm going to put this crazy bird in the middle within the flower and it looks like everything is blooming from around him completely not planned but I love how that came together. Just edging it, shading around it. Because I want, I don't want this guy to get lost in the middle of the flower. So don't be afraid to combine a napkin and a stamp, a magazine and a stamp, and a, or a napkin. Combine different thing elements from different, it's a mixed media. That's what it's all about. Texture, layers, and just mixing your supplies. I just think that is just adorable. And I hope you do too. I just want him to stand out a little bit more. So I'm coming in and I'm going to do more shading. In the center of the flower. So even when you think you're done, sometimes you're not done. You can get a link to where you can purchase my sentiment packs, including this through the garden gate one that I used here. That's in the description box. Just doing some shading around this word. Love, love, love. Thank you so much for joining me. Follow me on Instagram. Leave me a comment. Share my channel with your creative friends. Until next time, go get creative.